not gonna lie, uh, Upper Moon won. Uh, he is now my favorite member of the Moons, and he his moveset is absurd. His moveset is absolutely absurd, and not just from the fact that, you know, he's got a wide range speed on his hand. It's the way that his attacks really formulate, like, while laying out. Kokushibo is, is ridiculous. And what we've seen, like, okay, he does, the, like, the one slash where he's got a bunch of crescent moons, like, spinning, and they're constantly, like, expanding and retracting. And you have, like, this weird interval of the crescent moons just, you know, slicing anything they come across. And the thing that I, I think I really just solidify that he's my favorite is obviously one the design, uh, two his weapon is the coolest uh, out of all the uh, the moons, but also like his I, I, I trust the author I trust the author's uh, ability to give him a good backstory and honestly I feel like even with a good backstory combined with this uh, you know you just kind of like had a spreadsheet and you just kind of like looked at each of the moons and you you know gave each of their categories points. I still think that Upper Moon 1 would just completely sweep the case. Like, this dude, it's so interesting just to watch him fight. And this is in a series of, you know, by an author, and she, she's she been very much seen for her ability to draw and, like, formulate fighting choreography. She's been very good at just laying that out for Kamesa no Yaiba. And everything about Kokushibo's, like, design style-wise for fighting is... It's so interesting just to see happen. So, like, the chapter starts out, you know, we got Sanemi, and he, you know, he, he got pushed back. He got slashed by uh, the last attack that Kokushibu did right before he, you know, the, the end of the chapter when you saw, like, his, his extra long living sword with, like, three, like, blades coming out of the main blade. And he ends up losing two fingers, and he reveals, like, you know, his injuries are actually slowing him down. He, he's not able to really react too well to Kokushibo. And if it wasn't for Himejima, like, coming in and using his chain to, to assist him, that he would have lost both his arms. So it, I'm just wondering, like, at the moment, how are they really going to overcome this guy? Because this is a, a dude too powerful for everything, everybody else going on. And one thing I, I would like to look at what's going on right now in the series and for the possibility because there's really only upper moon one uh and and muzan left i think there's one oh there's the the moon that plays the instrument but i can't tell if she's a fighter or not she might just be you know very useful uh kind of like uh zetsu from naruto you know it's like okay yeah you're in there but you're, you're not a fighter character you're extremely useful in our party but i think there's one other moon that wasn't dead but i don't think they're involved in this yet and i i feel like it's not really going to matter with all these like pillars involved and they got you know marks on them it's only going to rather be these big guys but as i mentioned uh, in previous reviews that i'm curious if the author is going to continue because the series right now is surging everything about the series is doing so well and i know there's a lot of people be like oh you know we don't want the series to extend beyond uh, you know what the author wants just for the sake of sales and quality go down i don't think that'll happen uh, she seems pretty smart and she already has stuff laid out for the possibility of doing other things and i i talked about already that i i, I know there was some pushback but with, with my idea of you know, there being demons of different kinds and other kinds of, like, demons slaying corpse in other countries. Um, but, like, the idea behind it just seems like it, if there's demons and stuff, wouldn't there be demons in other lands? And logically, if you have demons in other lands, humans would, you know, either learn to fight back against them or, you know, what die out. So, it, as long as they have demons in other lands, logically, there's going to be other demon slaying groups. You don't have to have, oh, we're going to do a... a gigantic story like piece as long as this one but for each country no you just maybe like group them up together you could do a couple more arcs like this series is only like a little over three years old and with the success of how big the anime is doing right now it it would be kind of honestly i feel like it'd be kind of a waste to, to throw it away because not only are obviously sales for the manga and i can just call it now the anime is going to do really well uh sales wise because of how just it's good looking like, not only is the anime uh, enjoyable, but it's one of those series that is very visually appealing to, you know, just to watch along with the story. So, you know, you'd want to have a, you know, digital copy, whether you're just getting a, like a download or you're buying the physical one. Because they already said that, like, the, 
season two of the anime is very dependent on, you know, the amount of profit the uh, sales for the anime is going to be. I'm guessing the DVD, Blu-ray, and probably like Steelbox and stuff. Like, people are going to buy it. I mean, there's obviously going to be pirating, but I feel like it's building up enough of a fan base that it's just it's going to latch on to, you know, a, a, a solid kind of wave of success. And with everything like now, it's I think it's also important, like, the possibility of continuing because now the author, she's got all these new readers, all these new people to kind of go on and maybe, like, oh, with how big it is, you know, I have a little bit more free range to do things, so maybe she can try out more ideas. Again, like I said, like, maybe she wants to, like, bring in demons from another country. Maybe there's a couple characters kind of, like, move on. I think it, it would just make sense to keep going because otherwise it'd be like, why would you introduce the whole aspect with Akaza that, you know, really powerful demons that are, like, upper moon level can evolve into, you know, a being similar to Muzan. I, I just feel like it'd be kind of, like, pointless to introduce that if she wasn't planning the, the possibility of continuing, you know? But, anyway, throughout this chapter, Tokushiba's attacks are ridiculous. And then you see some people are, you know, members of the, you know, the intelligence area as well as it, uh, you know, some of the, the descendants. And they're just talking about pretty much, like, Oh no, we need everybody else that's not there to go towards Muzan. You know, I believe everyone that's fighting Kokushibo will defeat him. And I, I was kind of curious of like how they would do that, like going into this. But I think the chapter, end of the chapter, laid it out pretty well of, you know, at least the possibility of how it's going to go. But Kokushibo just busts out like attack after attack. Like he, he brings up like a seventh form. And it's kind of like this. Slash. He does like a slash and has multiple crescent moons, and each of the crescent moons like do like a big kind of like outward like razor wind slash, and they, each of them have like arcing moons coming off them. And I could only imagine like playing uh you know against a guy like this in a video game, like the amount of ridiculous placement involved in this, because that's one of the things I think is the most interesting. Is he has this very weird like crowd control area of effect specifically like placement in combat like it's not like his attacks are impossible to dodge but like it's the oddity like the the weird fluidity of the attacks and their patterns that would completely throw you off your game it, it'd be one of those bosses that unless you're somehow like as strong as him and you can just like you know perceive all his attacks and whatnot like if you were somehow on the same level but you know you're, that's not the case when you're a character playing in a boss battle you would probably die by this guy so many times. He'd probably be ridiculous to play against. But they're just, like, trying to figure out what they need to do. He busts out another one with a moon dragon's uh, wheeling tail. And it's pretty much just this long-range, big arcing slash. And with tons of other uh, crescent moons on it. Busts out a ninth form, which is, like, kind of like a bunch of, like, twisting arc blades at him. All with more crescent moons. And then another one that just was piercing guillotine and it's just a bunch of big circular blades all with crescent moons and like spinning and uh, retracting and expanding and it, it just seems like it would be so hard to fight against just by the the heart like the difficulty of trying to read his moves like when you see all these other characters like any of the other moons like they've got like weird abilities like doma had uh, you know he had ice on it like it was hard to kind of like fight him and breathe at the same time obviously breathing is important to the demon slayers and you had, like, Akaza. Akaza's just, like, you know, he's a straight, raw martial artist. He's, you know, trained to specifically, like, fight people with weapons as close-range martial arts. You know, he's going to get in close, and it's going to restrict, like, you know, a weapons user's uh, level of motion. But Tokushibo is ridiculous. And I think that um, one of the reasons that makes him ridiculous is the fact he used to be a Demon Slayer. And Zenetsu is kind of like a fellow member of the, the Thunder Pillar or not thunder? Yeah, was he thunder? Thunder breath user? The thunder lightning. I know there's a difference between the two, but um, yeah, he he was already pretty powerful and be, just like even with like weak levels of uh, blood demon arts and like he was a powerful member of uh, of the demon slayers, but he suddenly became you know upper moon level, which obviously made him multiple stronger. So I imagine if he didn't die. And he just kept progressing. He would have become a monster. Obviously, I don't think Kokushibo level, but it would have surprised me if it was like you know a year or two later in the story, and he's like Upper Moon two or three or something ridiculous. But then uh, Genya's just trying to figure out what he needs to do. Is he's watching these guys fight? They don't really know how how he's really gonna get in there. And he remembers something Tanjiro taught him because like he's he's like remembering that he's like mad that he's weak, and obviously he's not as strong as these other characters. 
he's able to kind of like keep up with his uh you know eating parts of demons to gain like some of their power and the fact that he's got a gun but he, he pulls out the piece of Fukushibo's living sword and he's gonna you know eat it be you know get drastic because Tanjiro's memory with him it's like it was only because Tanjiro was so much weaker than Upper Moon 6 that he underestimated him and he was able to get in for an attack. And that's going to be the thing, like I said, that, that will help him. I think there was, uh, Seven Deadly Sins had a similar moment because they were, you know, fighting the, uh, the Demon King and they didn't, he, like, he obviously is noticing all these powerful characters fighting him, but he didn't notice, uh, Gelda, who was probably, I'm just going to throw in, like, a guess, like, it, obviously power levels, you don't need to kind of, like, discuss the accuracy of them. She was only like a couple thousand, and the Demon King's probably he was probably like five five hundred thousand or something. So you know, absurdly stronger than she was, and it was because she was so much weaker that he didn't notice her when when she came in. And that's pretty much what Tanjiro was trying to lay out for uh, for Genya. You know, talking about like you know, in a fight, they're, they're going to focus on the strong characters and the weaker characters. They're not going to worry so much about. So he's probably completely just like disregarded Genya. And Genya eating this sword is probably going to give him, like, a sick boost. I'm hoping he gets, like, some form of alteration. Like, maybe he gets, like, uh, Kokuchibo's hair, or maybe, like, it upgrades his sword. Or maybe, like, imagine instead of, like, the eyeballs on a sword, he's got an eyeball gun or something, like, awesome and ridiculous. Could happen. Hope so. But, other than that, uh, tell me in this comment section what you think about this. Like, this chapter, some of the other... Parts of, of, of this arc have felt a little bit kind of, like, dragged on. Not, like, bad, but it's, like... Ooh, we got a lot of cool action this chapter, but I didn't get a lot of meat to go into uh, into the story and what's going on. It was just kind of like a lot of cool fighting choreography. This one was like a mixture of so many things. Because obviously you're getting like some, a character moment from Genya. We're getting set up for him. There's some confidence on the other pillars. You know, they're they're kind of like starting to fall and like get into a death position. Kokushibos. We're finally seeing Upper Moon One in action, and I'm very curious if he's going to end up having kind of like because he's obviously used to be breath of the sun now he's breath of the moon i wonder if he's gonna like have like his ultimate thing and like combine it and be like breath of the eclipse or something super badass like that we'll see we'll see how that goes i mean he's the only one that could do it because it's like obviously like moon turned demon uh, or sun turned demon moon but could he combine them into something i don't know we'll, we'll figure that out maybe that'll be his ultimate technique i think that would be a, a sick way if he ended up evolving and becoming like if they killed muzan in this arc Fukushima lived and he kind of evolved into being like a similar level of Muzan and that's like his style as he becomes like instead like an ecliptic breath that would be just all around like so much cooler and then have have all of his attacks kind of have that eclipse look to it you know it's just a a black circle with the white lines of the, like the sun glowing behind it that would be just absolutely like gorgeous to look at and I'd, I'd be really curious to see how uh, the author would harness that into uh into like a fighting style because he already made like crescent moons so without it being like moon energy or some form of like cool like mystic power it's just literally the shape of crescent moons and how like they integrate into the sword style other than that comment below tell me what you think is going on and uh tell me are, how much you're feeling about this arc like i this this whole fight i think is really kicking up um with I really liked Akaza. Doma I thought was cool, but not I wasn't too hyped about it. I liked his backstory. I was kind of sad he died just because I liked his build, but his fight itself, I was like, I'm not too big on you, but I, it was good. This one, though, I think is just absolutely excellent. So, you know, comment below. Don't forget the like button and the subscribe button. Like I said, I really appreciate it if you thumbs up the video. Subscribe for more and check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening. Bye.